Hi class. One of the most difficult concepts in inhalational anesthesia is to determine how cardiac output affects inhalational induction. Now I've developed a diagram which I help which I hope helps explain uh, this concept to you. And before we begin, I would like to orient you to the diagram so you understand where things are and what they mean. So here you can see you have a vaporizer with gas in it, a circle system, the lungs, the vessel rich group which composes 10% of the body mass and 75% and of the cardiac output runs through it, the muscle group which composes 50% of the mass and 19% of the cardiac output runs through it. The fat group, in which represents 20% of the mass and 6% of the cardiac output runs through it. Now, what you also see is a vascular loop that runs through all of the compartments. Is it set up like this? Realistically, no. This is a simplified diagram to help explain the concept of why changes in cardiac output affect inhalational induction. So imagine we have a gas, and you'll notice these little slits in the vasculature when it comes to the different groups. That simply represents that the gases have varying solubilities in each of these groups. We know that the blood flow is greatest to the vessel rich group, the blood flow then is next greatest to the muscle group, and then to the fat group. Now I would like you to also remember the size of our arteries and arterioles in each of these groups, and that resistance to flow varies in each of these compartments. Now moving on, we know that if we get a gas in the vascular in the vascular system in the blood it's going to move at a speed that's relative to the speed of flow so if we are moving very slowly right in the case of low cardiac output we're moving very slowly there's not much here and we get to our first stop if you will you can see now why a molecule that has a longer equilibration time can then enter the vessel rich group and find its way to the brain and hence with a low cardiac output you go to sleep quote unquote more quickly your time to induction with a low cardiac output is reduced so what happens if your cardiac output is high. Now imagine the flow of the blood is increased. Your time to equilibration at each of these sites is now decreased and you know that they vary in resistance and have different masses. <coughs> so what could you imagine happening? Well you get this molecule that's moving quickly now in the blood just around and around and around and then you know it stops here and then it stops here, and then it stops here, and then here, and then here, and then here. The brain and the vessel rich group in this case don't fill up as quickly because of the dramatic decrease in equilibration time because of the fast moving blood. And therefore when you have an increased cardiac output the time for a molecule to reach the brain is also increased. So your time to induction increases and the patient falls asleep slower. I hope this video was useful. Email me at armygas at gmail.com if you have questions.